me up high You spread my wings and you fly me to the sea Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to a beautiful series in which we're going to be blessed in the night of these, this Ramadan 1445 to journey through history and see these key events and key individuals who shaped the Islam that we have in front of us today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in tansuru allaha yansurkum, wa yuthabbit aqadamakum. O you who believe, if you give assistance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you his assistance. Allahu Akbar. And it is in this very month of Ramadan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his assistance, his victory in many forms. The victory came in the shape of certain events that took place that changed the course of history. And sometimes the victory came in the month of Ramadan with certain individuals either coming or passing on. That gave us, a, a highlighted to us what our success lies. And our success always lies in knowing our past so that we can rectify our future. What worked for them will work for us. So in these nights of Ramadan, let us travel back in time to see what these beautiful events that took place and these individuals that gave victory to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us that Allah will strengthen for us our feet if we give assistance and connect to Allah. As we delve into this first segment of Ramadan reflections and recollections, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts in these blessed days and nights of Ramadan. We have to travel all the way back to the fifth century in Islam. To be precise, 470 years after Hijrah of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was in the time of the first of Ramadan where we have to travel back to. And it's not in a place which we usually will associate with great events. It wasn't in Mecca. It wasn't in Medina. Rather, it was in an unknown city, a city of Jilan. In the first of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the great Mujaddid in this Ummah that came to revive the Ummah to the form of glory that he once had in the Khairul Qurun in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're speaking about none other than the Sultan of Jilan. Jilan is a province and a place rather which is in modern day Iran. And from there Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave us the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the beautiful Abdul Qadir Al Jilani Rahmatullahi Alayhi. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fill his grave with Noor and may Allah make us continue to benefit from his beautiful ulum. He was one that was born on the first, the, or rather the eve of the first of Ramadan al kareem 470 years after Hijrah, to a beautiful uh, mother who's, who was a pious Sayyida, whose name was Ummul Khair Fatima. May Allah be pleased with her. And she was at that time over 60 years of age where women at that age don't usually uh, give, uh, can have a child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously karamat that she, that she was uh, able to give birth to this little boy. And don't forget the mother is Hussein in lineage. That means her uh, ancestry leads all the way back to Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who is the son of Ali radiallahu karramallahu wajha. And the father is going to be another special individual, a Sayyid again, who's going to be uh, Musa radiallahu ta'ala an. And he is a very special individual whose lineage goes back to Imam Hassan, the son of Ali. So in this way we can say, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi alayhi is going to be the one whose motherly line and fatherly line both go back to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what they call Silsila to Dhahabiya or that golden chain which we have been ordered as part of our faith. 
to love that household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And no one loves the Prophet Sallallahu household except due to their love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything that connects to that beautiful household is also, and is also going to be loved by people of faith from every generation and every time and place. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a beautiful hadith it, that is mentioned in the Musnad uh, uh, of Imam Hakim Rahmatullah and others have also mentioned this where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with regards to the Ahlul Bayt, the noble family and the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, An-Nujumu Amanun li Ahl Sama wa Ahl Bayti Amanun li Ahl Ard that just as we see that the stars are a protection for the inhabitants of the, the heavens, the Ahl Bayt, the Prophet says, my household are salvations, are protection for the people of the earth. In fact, when we see that all the favors that the Prophet gave us from the Quran, from the Iman, introducing us to Allah, etc., etc., and so on and so forth, we are indebted to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that can, nobody can deny. But when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he were to ask for something in return, he, we, we would be obliged to give because of the blessings and the numerous multitude of blessings that, we, that he's given us. One after the other, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet when we see in the Quran, he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not asked to ask for any favors from us in place of all the blessings that he's given us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling his beloved Habib al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you don't, I don't ask of you anything in return for the blessings and the khayr that I'm giving towards you, you the ummah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just one thing that you be good to my family. And this is the noble status, the rank of the Ahl Bayt. Let us go back to our topic, the first of Ramadan, 470 Hijri, where on the eve of the first day of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Ummul Khair Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha with the blessed child. And don't forget, Every, some awliya are given their wilaya at a very later stage. Our, uh, uh, our uh, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullah was given his status from the day one. In fact, it's mentioned in the books of history that when he was born, he refused to have his mother's milk from the time of uh, dawn all the way till sunset. And thereafter, he would have the mother's milk. That's uh, karamat of the awliya. Karamat al-awliya'i haqqun. As is narrated in the books of Aqeedah that we have to believe in the, in the extraordinary events of these great friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he, he was almost as if he was fasting from the very day that he was born subhanallah. The full Ramadan. That's a great individual and this is who we have to, we owe it to them to know them, to read about them, to know about them. Allahu Akbar. At a very young age, he lost his father. And so he was given to the uh, care of the grandfather, who was also a special person. And so the first terbiya, the upbringing, the teaching of the Islamic sciences was at the father, the grandfather, who had this great responsibility for this child. His name was Abdullah Soma'i. May Allah be pleased with him. And after he passed away, the mother knew that she had to take the responsibility. There was no other males in that house other than the younger brother. And so the responsibility came to the mother. His name was actually Muhyuddin as a nickname that was given to him over 200 years by Sheikh uh, Junaid Baghdadi rahmatullahi Over 200 years that from the progeny of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa there would be a, an individual that would become there will be a muhyu, a, 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 a one who revives the deen of Islam. And he named him Muhyuddin 200 years before the birth of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani And here the mother is seeing the special 
qualities that she sees and so she begins to teach whatever she knew of Islamic sciences but she knew that she couldn't give it justice and so she says that you have to go to the centers of uh, learning which is in Baghdad and she says that your father left uh, 80 dirhams gold coins I'm keeping 40 for your brother and 40 for yourself take this and take this and learn the religion of Islam with it but I promise you and I'm, uh, I want you to make a promise to me that in your life that you lead by this example that you will never ever tell a lie and he made a promise and they parted ways she's remained in Jilan and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani who's almost about 18 at this age and he begins as a teenager off to Baghdad he catches a ride with a caravan because in those days there was highway robbers etc so they would have power in numbers when they travel together along the way no doubt that Abdullah al-Badawi who was a chief of all the highway robbers he began to loot the caravan that Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was traveling in and he one of the people from the bandits came to him he says have you got any wealth he says yes I've got some that my mother has stitched under my sleeve so he took the bandit was surprised that he would just openly say something and expose where his money is and so he brushed it off as this is something which we can't take he laughed it off and walked off again they came to him second time and he gave the same response when they said it a third time and got the same response they went to the leader Abdullah al-Badawi or Ahmad Badawi and this is the time when this interaction with this Ahmad Badawi is going to be taking place with young Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi he says when we had when you had the opportunity to lie we would not have found this 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 discreet pocket that's under your sleeve and yet you still tell us the truth and so he says he says I made a promise to my mother which I'm going to fulfill and so I can't lie because I said that I would never ever lie the eyes drop of the bandit king and he says you are such an individual who himself made a promise and wants to fulfill the promise to just your mother and I am so wretched that I am not fulfilling my promise to my creator and he begins to cry and he repents out of his ways Allahu Akbar these are the great mujaddidun of this ummah that gave so much ithar and so much love and so much honesty to this world when the world was in chaos at the time he gets to Baghdad and he begins to search as study his knowledge all of his money has gone he's finished in in almost like the uh, the days that he was searching to find out he finds the madrasa which is called the Nizamiya the famous institute of Baghdad and he begins to study the Hanbali fake and he begins to study some of the sciences of the inner the spirituality path and he begins to eclipse all of them but what does he do for food the riwayah tell you Allahu Akbar after hardships come ease Allahu Akbar because in them days were the days of true hardship he used to go to the banks of the Euphrates River and if there was any wild vegetables or vegetation that was growing he would eat on that if he didn't find anything he would go away to the point that that age was the age of drought and so he would see that other people were in need and so he would go out looking for vegetation and he would come back without taking anything because other people would need it more than he needed it that's called ithar and that's a beautiful character and the heart that Allah blessed him with Allah Akbar one of the days that he came back absolutely several days that he hadn't eaten but he saw somebody else who needed it more and so he gave the vegetables to the other person and came back absolutely starving and this is the true meaning of starving when we say starving it doesn't mean anything because we don't know the reality of these several days that they remain hunger to the point that he couldn't even walk and he had to rest against the masjid wall and a person came in who would look like who looked like a traveler and he sat on the other side of the courtyard and he had some fried meat and some bread that he was absolutely eating Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani Rahmatullah who had eaten for several days at this point as soon as he was placing something into his mouth 
Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani's mouth would automatically open. This is how hungry he was. He was almost in a, in a state where he didn't know what he was fully doing. And he was craving for almost that food that he was seeing in front of him. But at that time, he looked on his nafs and he admonished his nafs. He says, Ismir, he said, Ismiri, he says, have patience. How come you're showing impatience? Trust in Allah, he's addressing himself. At that point, Allah took all the pangs of hunger away. In fact, this individual who's eating the food saw him, came over to him and offered to share some of his beautiful meals with him. In this conversation, he says, I'm a student, I'm here from Jilan, a province in Iran. So to the, his surprise, this man was also from Jilan and he begins to tell his story. He says, as I was leaving, an elderly lady over the age of 70 saw me and she gave me 40 gold coins. And she says, my son is called Abdul Qadir Jilani, who is studying in Baghdad, give him this money. And as when, when you find him, give this amana to him. But as I came into Baghdad, I couldn't find you. I stay inside Baghdad would prolong and it stayed extended because I couldn't find you, but I had to give you this amana. My money ran out. And so I was compelled to buy some food from your money. So, oh Abdul Qadir, do you know anybody by that name? And so Sheikh Abdul Qadir with a smile on his face, knowing that his mom has given some money, that's been given to this individual. He says, I am Abdul Qadir from Jilan. And then this person begins to apologize. He says, I use your money. I, I was compelled to do it. I had no other option. But Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi give me in the heart and the prophetic way that was ingrained into him. Allahu Akbar, naturally that was ingrained into him. He began to pardon him. He says, I applaud your honesty that you gave out of your way to find me and you look for me and you prolong your stay for me. Whatever's remaining of that money, here's half, you can take this. And for your honesty, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. These were the hearts that melted people, made the worst of enemies into friends, made the people absolutely change their ways. By Allah, if you assist like Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullah did, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist us. We need to purify our character to be like these greats of this Ummah. Whenever we pass by the first of Ramadan, remember this great individual. This was just a few snippets from his life. It is upon you to open the books and find out what the rest of his amazing life of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani rahmatullahi has in store for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ennoble his grave, to elevate his rank, and to make us to continue to benefit from his beautiful example and his beautiful way. Join us each night as we delve into the history and the beautiful things that give victory to Islam in this blessed month of Ramadan. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. You lift me up high, you spread my